Hello everyone. How are you all? I'm your very own Dr. Sachin Kapoor. I hope you all must be in a very good state of health and spirits. Well, majority of you already know me and those who do not know me, let me tell you, I'm Dr. Sachin Kapoor with MPhil and PhD degree with uh, nearly 25 years of uh, teaching experience. In this session, what I am going to discuss with you is something very, very basic, but uh, undoubtedly very important for all those uh, students who are uh, going to study human physiology. Whether you are going to do your MBBS degree or your uh, BDS or any of the other paramedical courses, anatomy and physiology forms basis. And these are very, very important subjects. Right. So before going into the details of uh, this session, let me tell you how you can connect with me through different uh, media. You can uh, connect with me through my Instagram that is Sachin.Kapoor. This is the WhatsApp number and uh, this is the Telegram group which you people can join for uh, any kind of a study material which is related to MBBS Physiology, Anatomy, Biochemistry. You can also install my Android app, which is completely free of cost. Once you install it, you will find that there are a lot many sections which you can explore. Well, the latest MBBS curriculum is completely competency based. Now, what is this competency based medical education? I have uploaded a separate video for that. You can check the playlist and watch that video. One book which serves the basic needs, not only basic but even the advanced needs of an MBBS student for physiology, that book is Guyton and Hall. Let me tell you, if you are studying your medical degree in any of the Indian colleges, then you have to follow the third South Asian edition, right? Guyton and Hall, textbook of medical physiology, third South Asian edition, you have to follow. In this session, I'll be discussing the syllabus of general physiology. Right? General physiology is one of the topics of the complete human physiology syllabus. I'll be telling you each and every subtopic and how you have to prepare it. Now, before going into the details of the general physiology, let me first tell you that uh, what are the different uh, topics in human physiology which you have to study. The first chapter is general physiology, which we'll be discussing in detail. Then hematology, that is about blood, nerve and muscle physiology, gastrointestinal physiology, cardiovascular physiology, respiratory physiology, renal physiology, endocrine physiology, that is about different endocrine glands of the body, their secretions, that is hormones, and what are the effects of hyposecretion of hormones, what are the consequences if an hormone, if a particular hormone is secreted in large amount that is hypersecretion, reproductive physiology, the basic anatomy of uh, male and female reproductive systems, spermatogenesis, oogenesis, menstrual cycle and uh, then fertilization, then neurophysiology, the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system and integrated physiology. So these are the main chapters of uh, human physiology. The focus in this session is mainly on general physiology. Now, what are the different uh, topics which you have to study in general physiology? Number one is describe the structure and functions of a mammalian cell. This is a comparatively very easy topic and you can relate it with your uh, junior or your high school classes also, right? We'll be studying about the structure of the plasma membrane, the structure of the nucleus, and what are the different organelles which are present in a cell. Then, 
Second topic is about homeostasis, the maintenance of constant internal environment, whether it is related to thermoregulation or osmoregulation, right? And then intercellular communication, how two cells are able to communicate with one another through different types of intercellular junctions, right? There are tight junctions, there are gap junctions, desmosomes, hemidesmosomes. So all those different uh, intercellular junctions we have to study. Next topic is apoptosis, that is the programmed cell death. Then. Next topic is the transportation across cell membrane. How substances are being transported across the cell? Active transportation, primary active, secondary active, then passive transportation, diffusion and osmosis. All those things will be discussed in this topic. Another interesting topic is the fluid compartments of the body, the ionic composition and the mechanism of measurement. How do we measure intracellular fluid and how do we measure extracellular fluid, interstitial fluid, plasma, the composition? All those things will be discussed in this topic that is fluid compartments of the body. Next topic which relates to chemistry is the concept of pH and buffer systems in the body. Next is Describe and discuss the molecular basis of resting membrane potential that is RMP and action potential. Certain basics of this topic you have already studied in your uh, junior classes. Now we'll be discussing this in detail. How the resting membrane potential is maintained? What is the role of sodium potassium APPase pumps? What are graded potentials? What is the summation of graded potentials? And how, they how do they result in action potential? And then finally, Demonstrate the ability to describe and discuss methods which are used to demonstrate the functions of the cells. How do you demonstrate the functions of the cells and uh, the cellular products? The communication and replication in clinical, clear, uh, clinical care and research. So these are the main topics of general physiology. Let me discuss each and every topic with its subtopics. Now what all we have to study in the mammalian cell? We have to study about plasma membrane, the structure of plasma membrane. It's a bilayer of phospholipids with proteins. Then cytoplasm and the different organelles. What are the different organelles? Mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum, centrosome and uh, the cytoskeleton, microfilaments, microtubules then nucleus and about chromosomes. So this is a very basic but very interesting topic and you can score good marks. Homeostasis. What all we have to study in homeostasis? What is homeostasis? The maintenance of constant internal environment, control systems in the body, what are the variables? What is a control center? Negative feedback mechanism, positive feedback mechanism, Negative feedback we'll discuss with respect to osmoregulation, thermoregulation. Positive feedback mechanism we'll be discussing parturition, the mechanism of giving birth to the baby. And we'll be talking about the gain of a control system. When it comes to intercellular communication, we need to discuss about zonula occludens, that is tight junctions, gap junctions, adherence junctions, desmosomes, hemidesmosomes. These topics are very beautifully explained in the book Tortora with the diagrams. See, I told you to follow Garden and Hall South Asian edition for uh, physiology as a basic book. It explains everything very nicely, but certain diagrams are not very good, right? I'm sorry to say that. So in that case, we need to follow certain other books for flowcharts and diagrams. So for this particular topic, I'm telling you to follow Tortora. Apoptosis, that is programmed cell death, the pathways of apoptosis. These are uh, nicely explained in Guyton. So we can refer from Guyton. Then transport mechanisms across cell membrane. So this becomes a little lengthy topic and sometimes students may find it a little confusing also. 
we have to discuss diffusion, osmosis, primary active transport, secondary active transport and vesicular transportation, endocytosis, pinocytosis, exocytosis and all. So for this, the basics you can clear from the book Tortora. So you can follow Tortora for this and in addition to that, you can follow Guyton. Some of the students from Indian universities can refer to the book uh, A.K. Jain also. That is also a good book. It explains the things in a point-wise uh, form. Fluid compartments of the body. I'll tell you to exclusively refer to book uh, Guyton for this. Fluid intake and output. That, what's the total amount of water which you daily intake? How that water is removed from your body? There is sensible water loss, there is insensible water loss, there is water loss in the form of evaporation from your skin in the form of a sweat, then water is lost through your lungs also, water is eliminated in the form of urine and uh, even in the form of uh, saliva and even tears also. We will be discussing about intracellular fluid compartment, extracellular fluid compartment, constituents of ICF and ECF. Then indicator dilution principle, which is a method which we use for the measurement of the body fluid volumes. So this is the sixth topic and these are the subtopics which we need to study. In pH and buffer systems, we need to study about concept of pH, chemical acid base buffering, anion gap, what is acidosis, what is uh, alkalosis. Now, this topic is given in in-depth detail in a separate chapter in the book uh, Guyton, but uh, if you want, you can refer it from some um, Indian author book also, maybe A.K. Jain. Resting membrane potential and action potential, one of my favorite topics. What is resting membrane potential? You need to study in detail about the exolemma, the exon, plasma membrane of the exon. We say that uh, under normal resting conditions, the inside of the exolemma is negatively charged and outside is positively charged. How is it maintained? What is the role of different types of ion channels? There are sodium leakage channels, potassium leakage channels, voltage-gated sodium channels, voltage-gated potassium channels, sodium-potassium ATPase pumps. So we need to discuss all that in detail, the genesis of resting membrane potential, what is equilibrium potential and what is AP action potential or the spike potential, what are the properties of action potential, it follows all or none principle and what are graded potentials. Every kind of stimulus cannot result in the generation of uh, action potential. Then the ninth topic is methods to demonstrate the functions of cell, right? How do we come to know that whether a cell is functioning properly or not? We have different techniques like biopsy along with microscopy. Then there is evaluation of the secretory products of the cell. There is evaluation of the cellular contents. There is assessment of the electrical activity of the cells. Assessment of genetic functions of the cell. And there are certain biomarkers of the abnormal cells. So these were the subtopics in the chapter general physiology. You should be very well acquainted with your syllabus. All the topics should be on your fingertips. That's how you can develop a strong command of the subject. Once again, you can follow me on all these social media and plus I'll tell you to please read the description of the video also. Many details are mentioned in the description of this uh, video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Press the bell icon so that you get all the important notifications and do like this video and share with your friends also. Thanking you and wishing you all a very, very bright and prosperous future. Namaskar.